Coach Lou filling in for Tasha K on Unwind with Tasha K, girl. Oh, yes, I'm back. It's good to see everybody, girl. Listen, we have a lot to discuss. We have a lot to talk about, okay? It's a whole bunch of change-ups going on with Real Housewives of Potomac, if you're into that type of thing. And, girl, the Federali hood has raided all of Diddy's properties. All of those sex dungeons will be brought to light, I'm sure. The police are down there. They pulling the kids out of the house. I said, why y'all pulling the kids out the house? You know why? Because them kids probably smashing on some of them alleged, you know, sex traffic victims as well. Okay? You can't tell me Diddy ain't passing, you know, smash over to the kids. Okay? It's getting, you know, I had it, son. Here you go. Shout out to Lori Harvey. Um, Listen, it's going to be a good show. I'm so excited to be back. I'll be here all week. Okay, so make sure you come back and you enjoy the show. But we got a little ad, we got a little commercial before we get into the thing, y'all. Like up the video. Risa Tisa unveiled a load of videos. Who the fuck did I marry? 400 million views talking about y'all ex-husband. Risa Tisa, ex-wife, who straight line to y'all. It's completely false. Now, Latoya, a lot of people have been reaching out and mm -hmm. they've been wanting to hear your side. When you're dealing with this sort of trickery, and that's what I call it, it's like you being bamboozled, right? When a person comes into your life and they're constantly bamboozling you, especially like when you've been through trauma and things of that nature, you want to believe so badly that this is the truth. Legion really led y'all down a rabbit hole. He used to talk to this dude on the phone like every day. And his name was Miguel, right? Two gentlemen that looked out for me, my mom and dad passed away. They became brothers to me, which is Elgin and Miguel. These are the guys that I would talk to in the morning time. Miguel doesn't even exist. Uh oh no. Miguel's not even a real person. Oh no. He was wearing a fucking bulletproof vest, walking around the neighborhood as security of the apartment complex. Legion. This is in Ennett and Jonesboro, Georgia. Your it's mom funny. talked about him walking around the neighborhood at night. He was using his dad's badge, acting like the police. He's stopping the game beggars and he is patting them all the way down. He was only doing it just to fill just on to them. Just to fill on them, because he didn't work for these people. He had a whole different job. <laughs> Legion. All the cars that he promised me, they're actually on Facebook with my name on them, right? That he never bought. It's just said that she had, right, he, she but, was promised cars as well too. But he literally has, I have screenshots right, of the actual post that this lunatic actually put my name in it, tagged me, said, come outside, I have your I have your anniversary present. So where's the car? It never got bought. I was at the station and he acted like he got the a Christian phone call. The Christian radio station. Yes. Okay. And he was on the phone like, hey bro, what's up? And then the phone rang and it was my mama. She just really just kind of opened the door to something that I wasn't even prepared for. Here I am thinking that we're just dealing with a pathological liar, an alleged mm -hmm. child and I, like, molester. She, like she said, I don't want to start crying because I don't want my makeup to trip, but every fiber in my being, I'm not a violent person, but don't touch my kids. Poor of a person. That's a lot of my childhood gone, you know? Did it cause problems between you and your mom? If you enjoy shows like this and would like to see more with me on stage in your city, well, I'm coming. Tickets on sale right now. Link in the description box as well as the bio. Hurry up now while tickets last, okay? <laughs> yes. Make sure y'all go to TashaKOnStage.com to get your tickets. Okay, she will be coming to a stage near you, girl. Check the dates, TashaKOnStage.com. Yes. All right, let's go ahead and get into the topics that we have for tonight. Kai Sinet. I don't know. Listen, y'all know I'm old, right? I don't know if y'all know because I know I look young. But I'm old, okay? So I don't be knowing a lot of the kids, but I see them. I see their little clips and stuff on the internet. I remember when Nicki Minaj was over there by him. I think um, um, it was Drewski who was over there by him when they was acting like that pretty dark-skinned girl looked like a man. Um, you know, they all be on his lives acting a fool, okay? So he had, make me sweat, make me water. You know what I'm saying? They had her. Tyler, they had her on his show, girl, and it was very uncomfortable, and I did not appreciate anything that went down. Jasmine, please roll the footage. 
So um, I can't do Zoe. So my only option is um, Tyler. Would you like to go on a date with me? Are you asking for real? Yeah. Don't do that. What you mean? Why not? Would Don't you like... do that. I'm serious. Whenever you get some free time, would you like to go on a date with me? You can't do that. On a whole live thing. Why not? It's, t it's true for there. Um, but we friends, though. You're right. Yeah, we friends. You're right. <laughs> All right, uh, next one. <laughs> the pet. She gave up friend pet. Friend pet. Sir, you have been friend zone. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you why I didn't like it. I didn't like it because I feel like he was putting her on the spot on purpose. Like, you literally wanted to ask that lady out for real. And you wanted to do it on camera in front of all them people because you thought that that would, like, muscle her into saying yes. Because she didn't want to make the people on the internet mad. But, girl, F these people on the internet. I would have been like, sir, why, why, why are you trying to, like, bully me by humiliation Insta going on a date with you. He wasn't even looking at her. Like, what is going on in 2024 where you think you can ask me out on a date on a live stream and you ain't even looking in my eyes? Like, look at my eyes if you're trying to ask me out. But I'm glad she found a cute little way to go ahead and we friends. <laughs> we friends. You know what I'm saying? We cool. <laughs> mm. Girl, where is security? Where is management? All I know is... I'm starting not to really feel whatever is going on in this this young man's house on his live streams. I don't know what's going on, but Tyler, girl, be safe out there. Don't just be going to people's house without no security. I hope you had people there with you because that's the type of situation that you get put in, you know, is giving casting couch. It, it's real weird. Like, why are you trying to hunch on me? This is business. Don't try to hunch on me. This is business. Ugh. But let's go ahead and move on. I'm done. Girl. Real Housewives of Potomac. Oh, my God. They, listen, girl, it's the switch up. We didn't even know we need. So, first of all, I'm, I'm saddened by the fact that Candace is leaving so soon, girl. But I also feel like this last season, I stopped watching it. I stopped watching it. It wasn't good to me anymore. The girls are not getting along. They're trying to push Candace out, and I guess they did what they intended to do, but it didn't end up the way they thought it was going to end up. We're going to get to that in a minute. But Candace said, as I embark on a new chapter, after six remarkable years with the Real Housewives of Potomac, I am filled with gratitude for the enriching friendships, personal growth, and moments of introspection that have defined this journey. Dillard Bassett, 37, says, with a whirlwind of new opportunities and responsibilities on my plate, I have decided to take a break from Real Housewives of Potomac. I'm wondering, are you pregnant, Candace? I'm just wondering, because I know that's what she wanted. She was, you know, very emotional about that during the season, that she wanted to have a baby. And it sounds as if, you know, when she says she has new responsibilities on her plate, I'm wondering if it means, yang, 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 you know, baby in the tummy. You know what I mean? I wonder what's going on there. But either way, we wish Candace the best. We glad that she left on her own terms and then people did not fire her because guess who they did fire? Robert, Robert Dixon. Oh, yes. Let me tell y'all something. I do not like Robin and I'm not going to pretend to, girl. So I'm so happy when I tell y'all, good. This is good. I'm glad. I'm glad she was fired. She hasn't been giving anything for the longest. And let's not even get to get into the fact of how much she probably hid from us about Juan. Because I feel like for seasons, Robin has been on the show mad, acting a fool with all of the other housewives simply because she could not get her frustrations out on her mans because he was out somewhere with a co-worker getting his nails done and going to the laundry and then going down to the hotel, motel, holiday inn, flapping, you know, slapping it, flipping it, rubbing it down. You know, he was doing a lot. And then he lied and said that I was just paying for a hotel room for a friend that I met on Instagram. That doesn't make any sense, Juan. Men are not that, I'm sorry, most men are not that generous. They're not going to meet a random person on Instagram in the 
DMs, then go to a hotel and pay for their room simply because you've had a few conversations. Oh, no, Juan and, and Robert. That's not what I think happened at all. Oh, no. I think he was out there getting the cooch. I think he's with Robin because Robin financially supports the household at this point. And we all know, well, not anymore, girl. But we know that back in the day, Robin lost Juan's money. And it seems as if he's always resented her for that. And I really feel like in their relationship, he's basically been getting out his revenge on her by treating her badly during the process of their relationship. Then she remarried him. And then the cheating rumors come out the same time that she remarries him. And now she's getting fired from the show because he refused to open up and actually share what was going on. Like, I feel that he was the one that was really stopping them from sharing whatever was going on. And she wanted to please him and keep a man that don't really like her, that's cheating on her, that's disrespecting her, and now she didn't lost her job. Girl, this is when sticking beside your man goes wrong. Because to me, it seemed like you let, you let him, you know, make you lose out on a check. A good check. And you, girl, are your hats doing that good? Because y'all know she had, she had hats. She had hats. She was selling hats. And I think she's doing other things now. Like, she going to find a way to, you know, continue to make her money. Like, I wonder if her and Giselle still going to do their little messy-ass podcast behind a paywall. Not that they not on the show no more, girl. Well, Giselle's still there. But, you know, she ain't got nothing going on. But I'm glad her best friend gone. I wonder what she going to do now. Mm, let's move on because there's more. Girl, Karen Huga, Karen the Drunk. Okay, it used to be Karen the Dime. Nah, it's Karen the Drunk. Y'all, Karen really got up there. Karen got up there and she said, let me tell you everyone, let me tell you, let me tell you what happened. I went to dinner with a friend. And it's getting closer and closer to Mother's Day. I know it's months away, but March and May is the same month as far as I'm concerned. I had dinner, and there were conversations, and I was cherry-eyed, I was sad, and I got in the car, and I drove in the rain, and then the, 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 the tears burned my eyes, and my lashes got messed up, and, and then all of a sudden, I ran into something, and boom, bow, shit, I have a DUI. Child, let me tell y'all something. <laughs> Karen, Karen is full of it. Karen's full of it. Okay? Karen ran into a sign. Bumped off the sign and then ran into a damn tree. Then the car blew up. Then the people had to come and drag her out the Maserati because she out here being a hot girl. You know what I'm saying? She in a Maserati, speeding down the street, bumping into signs and shit. Girl, when they said they pulled her out the car and she was smelling like liquor, I thought they was going to tell us she smelled, she smelled like expensive liquor. Do y'all know? They said Karen had two bottles of Stella Ross in her goddamn car. I see it. You mean to tell me you the grind dime. You was married to the black Bill Gates. You had money. And you drinking Stella Rose. And not only that, but you drinking it to the point of DUIs, car crashes over Stella Rose? Girl, you should never get in no car accident over no Stella Rose. Girl, you get in car accidents, you get DUIs over expensive liquors and tequilas and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like Jose Cuervos. All right? Don Julio. You know what I'm saying? Or you, you girl, I'm just, what kind of cheap shit is going on? Stella Rose? Girl, we was about to die. Girl, she ain't going to be able to have insurance because y'all know this is not her first DUI. Mm -mm, it's not her first DUI, y'all. She done been out here before. Drinking and driving, that's why she had blue eyes. Okay, back on Real Housewives of Potomac, it was a rumor that Karen was smashing her driver, blue eyes. Well, I guess she must have been smashing him and had to get rid of him because she should have had a damn driver because apparently she get tore up off Stella Rose. Girl, I'm so disappointed in Karen. And I'm even more disappointed that she decided to try and use her mom. Like, girl... Not using your day, mama. Not using your day, mama. That's so terrible. Why are you making us quote th that those terrible lyrics that Nicki Minaj wrote? Why are you making us quote that, Karen? Trying to act like this is about your mom. This ain't about your mom. This is about your alcohol addiction. You need help. Okay? 
And listen, I know Big Bag Sharice wanted to, you know, put it out there that she was an alcoholic. But Sharice, the only reason you know she's an alcoholic is because you won too, girl. I don't know. <laughs> girl, you had a champagne room. We supposed to think you ain't out here drunk. You was on the last episode. We saw you on sweating with a bad wig, flipping out. We don't know whether it's menopause or alcoholism. Maybe a little bit of both. But either way, things are changing at Real Housewives of Potomac. I heard that there's another person that's no longer going to be on the cast. And I wonder who that's going to be. Because to tell you the truth, I feel like Wendy needs to go. If Candace isn't going to be there, Wendy needs to go. Mia is going to be there because, as everybody saw, you know, if you watched the episode last night or if you were on Instagram this morning, you saw that Mia, you know, is wondering if the oldest child or there's some situation with the paternity of her, her oldest child and if it's actually G's baby girl I don't know but we know she on Instagram with a new man a young man who she been messing around with since high school she said he was her high school sweetheart his name is Ink and I want to know if it's going to be her that they getting rid of or it's going to be somebody else because she really out here pulling out all the stops to keep her job Okay, she said the baby may not be his. I cheated on him. His peen don't work. Girl, she putting all her shit out there. <laughs> she emptied her pocketbook out on a table to keep that check at Real Housewives of Potomac. Okay, so <sighs> we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to go down with Real Housewives of Potomac, but I don't want to watch the show anymore. I'm telling y'all right now, I'm done with it because y'all ignored all the colorism that was going on over there, and I don't really have time for that. So y'all can keep y'all can keep Real Housewives of Potomac. Y'all really can. It used to be that girl. It's not that girl no more. All right, y'all, let's move on. Tiffany Haddish. Girl, Tiffany Haddish, Tiffany Haddish. Let me tell y'all something. Something wrong with Tiffany Haddish. Tiffany Haddish need to go to therapy for what happened to her as a child, first of all. Okay, I don't know if she's in therapy. I don't even know if it's working. But I feel like she always telling us too much information. Okay, so while being a guest on British journalist Amanda Dickadnitz, the Conversation podcast, Tiffany explained how she had to quit smoking and drinking completely due to her recent DUIs because everybody likes to get DUIs. They got Uber, they got Lyft, and y'all hoes got money. But y'all still out here driving yourselves around intoxicated. Don't make no sense. <sighs> she says, I haven't drank any alcohol, smoked any weed, or anything in like 72 days. Tiffany said, it's not hard. It's not that hard for me because it wasn't really like my main thing anyways. It wasn't her main thing anyways. Mm. She says, um, if y'all recall, Tiffany racked up two DUIs over the past two years, with the most recent one coming in November 2023. Tiffany says due to her legal situation, she had to give up her vices. It's court mandated. She continued referencing her two DUI arrests. She then added she only smoked weed to manage pain associated with her endometriosis. Okay, um, too much information. Um, but here's the thing, Tiff. Here's the thing. What was the main drug? I feel like she tried to insinuate that it was weed, but oh no, my girl, you told us you didn't have a problem quitting weed and alcohol because that wasn't your main thing. What was the main thing? What do we think, you guys? What do we think? What do we think? What do we think? Jasmine, we think? We think? We think? We think it was like white powdery substance, maybe? I don't know. Okay, and I'm wondering um, if, if that's the anything because y'all, y'all, Tiffany Haddish worries me. Like, she just worries me on so many levels ever since the situation with the children and even before that. Like, her comedy is self deprecating, and that's like an issue for me because comedians really be like, basically one coke line away from serious right like we all know the comedians are funny ha 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 but it's literally one away from being a dark situation okay so i don't know what's going on with tiffany haddish all i know is she is constantly in the news looking a damn fool and looking a fool is telling us that you really don't have a problem with alcohol. Like, don't you know your publicist and them told us the issue was alcohol? They told a judge that it was alcohol all so that you would be able to get off? And now you're on a podcast telling everybody, girl, it wasn't even really alcohol, girl. That's what they told everybody. But that wasn't really my issue. <laughs> Pull publicists. 
I mean, has she been in anything lately? Does she have any jobs going on? Like, she's just famous for no reason right now. I think Tiffany needs to go talk to God. You know what I'm saying? Go sit in a prayer closet. Talk to God. You know what I'm saying? And then go to a therapist. And then talk to God again. And then go back to the therapist. Because sometimes you need to match these things up. Because if God is telling you something that the therapist ain't exactly on board with, it may not be God, bitch. May, may be that person in your mind that's telling you to do whatever cocaine you was probably doing. But you know what? We wish Tiffany Haddish all the best, even though she creeps us out, okay? Because she creeps me she creeps me out at this point, y'all. I'm sorry, Tiffany creeps me out. <laughs> I don't know if it's just me. Comment, let me know. All right, so we're going to take a quick little break, and we're going to come right back with more from Unwind with Tasha K. Risa Tisa unveiled a load of videos. Who the fuck did I marry? 400 million views talking about y'all ex-husband. Risa Tisa, ex-wife, who straight line to y'all. It's completely false. Now, Latoya, a lot of people have been reaching out and mm -hmm. they've been wanting to hear your side. When you're dealing with this sort of trickery, and that's what I call it, it's like you being bamboozled, right? When a person comes into your life and they're constantly bamboozling you, especially like when you've been through trauma and things of that nature, you want to believe so badly that this is the truth. Legion really led y'all down a rabbit hole. He used to talk to this dude on the phone like every day. And his name was Miguel, right? Two gentlemen that looked out for me, my mom and dad passed away and became brothers to me, which is Elgin and Miguel. These are the guys that I would talk to in the morning time. Miguel doesn't even exist. Uh oh no. Miguel's not even a real person. Oh no. He was wearing a fucking bulletproof vest, walking around the neighborhood as security of the apartment complex. Legion. This is in Emmett and Jonesboro, Georgia. Your it's mom funny. talked about him walking around the neighborhood at night. He was using his dad's badge, acting like the police. He's stopping the game beggars and he is patting them all the way down. He was only doing it just to fill just on to them. Just to fill on them, because he didn't work for these people. He had a whole different job. <laughs> Legion. All the cars that he promised me, they're actually on Facebook with my name on them, right? That he never bought. It's just said that she had, right, he, she but, was promised cars as well too. But he literally has, I have screenshots right, of the actual post that this lunatic actually put my name in it, tagged me, said, come outside, I have your I have your anniversary present. So where's the car? It never got bought. I was at the station and he acted like he got the a The Christian phone call. radio station. Yes. Okay. And he was on the phone like, hey bro, what's up? And then the phone rang and it was my mama. She just really just kind of opened the door to something that I wasn't even prepared for. Here I am thinking that we're just dealing with a pathological liar, an alleged and I, child like, molester. When she, like she said, I don't want to start crying because I don't want my makeup to drip, but every fiber in my being, I'm not a violent person, but don't touch my kids. Horror of a person. That's a lot of my childhood gone, you know? Did it cause problems between you and your mom? If you enjoy shows like this and would like to see more with me on stage in your city, well, I'm coming. Tickets on sale right now. Link in the description box as well as the bio. Hurry up now while tickets last, okay? <laughs> All right, y'all. Don't forget to go to TashaKOnStage.com to get your tickets to the next show. And Legion Family's interview will be premiering tonight on TashaKLive.com at 8 p.m. M, okay so make sure y'all check that out because lord the story is definitely getting deeper and whew child the ghetto all right so speaking of the ghetto princess and ray j i know they rich but it's still the ghetto over there like don't don't let them people you know make you think because they got money they not ghetto then people make up the breakup every five minutes and y'all know recently they have filed for divorce again and it said that prink is dating john bodega i'm not even sure if that's true or not but that that's what they're saying girl that prink is out here winning poker championships and dating John Bodega, girl. And that's a good working black actor, girl. That's a good working, that's a good man, Savannah, girl. Okay? And he look like he'll treat her much better than this fool. Like, Ray J might be smart at keeping that money coming in. But when I tell y'all, I feel like he is a menace to any woman with real emotions. Like, if you have feelings, this nigga's going to step on him with his shoes. Like, like cigarette ashes on the floor. Um, recently, he's been doing a lot of interviews. He was on Angela Yee's show. And they were talking about how 
him and Prink are getting a divorce, how Prink is dating. And also he mentioned how he has one of the kids and she has another one of the kids. And, you know, she has the girl, he has the boy. And he said it's because, oh, his daughter don't like to miss school. She loves school. And I'm like, so the son is missing school? So is the son missing school? What's going on? Prink then posts a picture of her and her son saying, missing my baby boy. Haven't seen him in almost two weeks. And people in the comments are wondering, is Ray J keeping their son away from Prink because she's moving on like Maya? After all the things that he has done to her, Ray J is petty enough to do whatever he can to try to stop Princess from leaving him. And I do feel that it could be a possibility that he could be using, you know, the kid against her. Because he's that type of dude. I don't know if anybody's paid attention, but he's the type of guy um, to use your kids against you, to be vengeful. Because he doesn't want you to leave and he doesn't want you to be with anybody else, even though he stole you from Floyd Mayweather. Um... Girl, I don't know what's going on over there, but I'm sure they're going to be all up in our faces because they did a conversation for Ray J's new network, and Ray J has a message for the other messy-ass networks out there. And all the rest of you networks, I'm coming for you. Yeah, I'm coming for y'all. Y'all should have just gave me equity like y'all know y'all should have. You should have did what you were supposed to do. Remember when we did what we did? And then the head of the big networks hit you and hit me, and what did I say? I said, I'm riding with the homie. I'm doing the show. Remember that? No, you forgot, huh? You forgot. I know you forgot. Mm. You also forgot that somebody else was, like, already on two hit shows with me. And so I told her, do this because we're not doing that. You forgot. Hmm. It's starting to get amnesia. No problem. I'll just put my own network out. And now that my network is out, my, my goal isn't to annihilate the competition and the ops, because that would be annihilating myself. Um, because the ops needed us to become an op. Mm. Thank you, op. Mm. The crazy thing is, I just won, and now we start a network, so it's a winning season. Um, what, what, what this was, and what this was was just to show the homies, like, don't play with me, dog. Like, all that shit y'all woofing about y'all bringing the numbers and shit, calm down, bro. I'm the biggest, dog. Stop. And I love you on Paru. Like, you my brother. You my mother brother. And, and she my mother sister. But don't y'all ever get it twisted. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm him. And I hope we understood that with what I just displayed to y'all right now. And I love everybody that's been supporting, like, on the set. Like, stop. You, you, there's nowhere to go. I'm him. You hear me? I'm him on the set. I'm him. Cut it out, blood. On Paul Rowe, we love you. Listen. <laughs> y'all know Ray J. Ray J love to let y'all know every now and again he gang gang, right? He got to let y'all know that. You know what I'm saying? I I'm him, okay? I'm him. All right? Listen. It feel like to me, Ray J just trying to let Lemuel and all of them over there at Zeus Network know what's up, okay? It sound like... Y'all use Ray J to get on, right? Y'all was partners, but you ain't won't give Ray J equity in Zeus Network. That's what it sound like to me. I could be wrong, but listen, listen. So if y'all not giving Ray J what he asked for, Ray J gonna be petty because he's the pettiest nigga of them all, right? So he gonna go and start his own network. And then he gonna be competition with y'all and we gonna see what happened because y'all wouldn't have made it without Ray J. Okay, y'all wouldn't have made it without him. He that man, right? Listen, when when he said, when they, when they put it out there that he sold his technology company so he could use some of that money to invest in this new network, y'all, he is driven by the dark side, y'all. Ray J is driven by the darkness. The darkness is, okay? This nigga is not the light, okay? I don't care what he say. He's a Trump supporter. I don't trust him, okay? I know a lot of y'all will like him because we found out recently a lot of y'all are Trump supporters. Y'all are so weird. Look at y'all. Look at little cult victims. Look at y'all. Anyway, but yes, Ray J is out here about his money. That's why he's a Trump supporter. I don't know why you broke mother is worrying about him, but okay, fine. Do what you must, okay? Okay, if you want to be a bigot and, and vote for somebody based on your bigotry, go on ahead, do what you want to do. But Ray J scares me, y'all. 
Ray J sounded like he went through extreme lengths to get vengeance on Zeus Network and possibly on Prink. We don't know what's going on, but all I know is everybody that's dealing with Ray J need to be looking over their shoulder like a goddamn Jackson 5, okay? Now let's move on because I don't want him coming after me. Uh, Simon and Portia. Girl. <laughs> I just won't laugh for a little bit because I remember so many people arguing with me, just arguing hella hard with me about their relationship being fake or real. Y'all really thought that these people's relationship was real simply because they post stuff on social media. And I, I'm going to need for everybody to remember that social media is a place where people can post what they want you to see, not necessarily what is actually happening, okay? Since the divorce has been announced between these two people that have only been together for, what, five minutes? They was married for 18 months, I think, something like that. And now they're getting a divorce. And I told y'all, Simon has a two- to five-year cap on how long he'll stay with any woman okay two to five years and then he moving on like Maya he don't really like y'all like that okay but apparently Simon Guabadia claims that Portia Williams abandoned their house at one point and eventually returned with a man visibly carrying a gun on two separate occasions one incident allegedly happened on March 21st. That was recent. And it reportedly led Guabadia to call the police to intervene. Guabadia further accuses Williams of engaging in harassing behavior, including having third parties call and intimidate him and others in an attempt to force them out of the residence. He also alleges that Williams, along with her mother and her mother's boyfriend, forcibly entered the marital home around March 24th, disabling security cameras and tampering with items and evidence. I don't know what evidence was tampered with, um, but this is really getting messy. And I feel like Portia showed up with somebody with a gun because she didn't know what you was on. You've been on the internet running your mouth. You got your new little Portia lookalike girlfriend. You and Nene and Nene weird ass old man are doing double dates and all of that. So it's a lot of, you know what I'm saying, fraudulent, fugazi ass behavior going on. But Pete, Portia's a snake. Portia is a beautiful snake girl, and he is a snake, and they were snakes together. And I told y'all that. And now they're going to try to outsnake each other. Everybody, y'all really think that there was no gunman brought in? And it's not like a gunman, like somebody bust in the house waving the four fours, like, you know, we in a Diddy video or something like that. Like, that's not what's going on. You know what I'm saying? That's not it. You know, it's not Diddy. <laughs> it's not the federal hood. But no, it sounds like Miss Diane and her boy boyfriend came with a nice little something on the side just in case things went left because we didn't know what type of time Simon and his new face were going to be on, okay? You might want to try to stop Portia from taking her stuff. You might want to harm Portia. We don't know. It sounds like she showed up just to get her stuff and, you know, came with somebody to make sure that it wasn't no other mess going on, okay? But the fact that he already didn't had, you know, another woman, you know, at the, you know, in a car, probably had a new woman at the house, child, it's a mess. It is a mess. Every other day, there's something going on. He be posting stuff, pinning comments that speak badly about her. Ain't it crazy how a man one day could be all in love with you and then the next day, like, basically spraying you on Beyonce's internet like you a stranger? And listen, I know, I know you guys want to be so surprised because you thought they were so in love. But I would like for all of the women, everybody, men, women, everybody, children, all y'all listening out there, take this as a learning lesson. A man that will treat any woman the way he treated Fallon, is the way he will treat the next one. Because at the end of the day, the new B always becomes the old B. And she will get treated like who? The last B. Okay? Stop thinking that your coochie about to make this man be different. Grow up. Y'all know Portia lives in the Lulu land. Okay? Because she knew he was scamming. She knew that he was really trying to be with a woman every two to five years so he could stay in the country. Okay? They need to go ahead and deport him as far as I'm concerned. Get him out. He a mess. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and move on. I'm sure there'll be more about them in the upcoming days. Saucy Santana. Well, 
Saucy, our favorite male identified, flamboyantly feminine gay man. Um, he then came out and he got some advice for the girls. Let's see what he and asked. what's up with you independent who? Uh -huh. Scared to beg a nigga for money. Just like you slide the panties to the side, slide your pride to the side, baby. Beg. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with it. Who? When it comes to a nigga, I don't have nothing. And I ain't asking, I'm begging. Please, baby, please. I don't have it. <laughs> These Princess Diana diamonds ain't cheap. Put up your mortgage. Are you dumb? Are you stupid? Stupid. Brrr. Listen. Put your mortgage on. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. I might agree, but I also feel like Saucy Santana is capping. I feel like you capping because you was just on Love and Hip Hop telling Zell how the only reason you here is because of me. Because, you know, they, you know when, when the boys start arguing with, with each other, it just gets very, like, the, the voices, girl. When I tell you it was two niggas in there arguing, I was scared. I didn't know what was going to happen. On Love and Hip Hop, girl, Zell and Saucy Santana was arguing, and, and I didn't know whether Saucy Santana was about to get bent over a counter or hit. I didn't know what was going to happen. It was so much emotion going on in that room, so many, so many muscles. And, and backs and everything um but listen saucy i appreciate this advice and i i think this is good advice to the girls don't be scared to beg mm -mm. just don't be out here begging without having anything this is what he's saying is basically what your mama and your grandmama and your aunties told you y'all just don't want to be you know y'all don't want to hear this from somebody with a penis but ultimately like what he's telling you is just like you out here with a wet cooch bitch you need to not have a dry purse don't ever be out here with a wet cooch and a dry purse that's what my mama and them told us okay and basically what that means is, yes, you got your own money. You got your own shit together. That's true. That's true. But don't be out here bending it over and busting it wide for free. And you know why you can't do that? Because it's only like 80% of the women that have orgasms. And these is going to bust every time. So you need to make sure you're getting something else on the back end. Because you know they're going to come. You may not. I don't know what's going on with Saucy and all of them, because I know how the gay boys get down. Y'all just be out here S and D. You know what I'm saying? Y'all meet each other down at the park to S and D. And, you know, we're going to get it done, because at the end of the day, somebody going to be S and D. But when it comes to the girls, like, no self-respect that women should really be out here meeting with a nigga just on some S and D. You know, if you ain't getting your C8. <laughs> okay, listen, I'm trying to be cute about it. We on YouTube. But y'all know what I'm trying to say. Okay, Saucy's not wrong. You should not ever be scared to ask a man for money if you laying up with him. No, don't be scared. But at the same time, Saucy, it looked like you paying the bills over there by you and Zell. Because I don't know what Zell do, but as you told him, what you said to Zell on Love & Hip Hop, when was your last song? That's what you had said to your boyfriend. That's what you said to your boyfriend. So to me, that means that as much as you in a bed right now acting real fishy and shit, you in a bed cuddling and shit, you know what I'm saying? Go see rubbing against the titties and everything. Like, you feeling yourself real fishy right now, bitch, telling us what to do. But ultimately, you still out here paying for dick. <laughs> you paying for dick, Saucy. Stop playing with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Zell gives dick that, that's being paid for. He going to wear you out like, like a goddamn Tasmanian devil, but you going to have to pay for it. He might have some money sometime, but you paying for it most of the time. That's how I feel. Anyway, y'all, we're going to take a little quick break, and when we come back, we are going to delve into the Diddy Raid video. All right? Break. Risa Tisa unveiled a load of videos. Who the fuck did I marry? 400 million views talking about y'all ex-husband. Risa Tisa, ex-wife, who straight line to y'all. It's completely false. Now, Latoya, a lot of people have been reaching out and mm -hmm. they've been wanting to hear your side. When you're dealing with this sort of trickery, and that's what I call it, it's like you being bamboozled, right? When a person comes into your life and they're constantly bamboozling you, especially like when you've been through trauma and things of that nature, you want to believe so badly that this is the truth. Legion really led y'all down a rabbit hole. He used to talk to this dude on the phone like every day. 
and his name was Miguel, right? Two gentlemen that looked out for me, my mom and dad passed away that became brothers to me, which is Elgin and Miguel. These are the guys that I would talk to in the morning time. Miguel doesn't even exist. Uh oh no. Miguel's not even a real person. Oh no. He was wearing a fucking bulletproof vest walking around the neighborhood as security of the apartment complex. Legion. This is in an, an, an Jonesboro, Georgia. Your it's mom funny. talked about him walking around the neighborhood at night. He was using his dad's badge, acting like the police. He's stopping the game beggars and he is patting them all the way down. He was only doing it just to fill just on to them. Just to fill on them, because he didn't work for these people. He had a whole different job. <laughs> Legion. All the cars that he promised me, they're actually on Facebook with my name on them, right? That he never bought. It's a sad that she had, right, he, she but, was promised cars as well too. But he literally has, I have screenshots, right? Of the actual post that this lunatic actually put my name in it, tagged me, said, come outside. I have your, I have your anniversary present. So where's the car? It never got bought. I was at the station and he acted like he got the a Christian phone call. radio station. Yes. Okay. And he was, on the phone, like, hey, bro, what's up? And then the phone rang, and it was my mama. She just really just kind of opened the door to something that I wasn't even prepared for. Here I am thinking that we're just dealing with a pathological liar, an alleged and I, child like, molester. She, like she said, I don't want to start crying because I don't want my makeup to trip, but every fiber in my being, I'm not a violent person, but don't touch my kids. Horror of a person. That's a lot of my childhood gone, you know? Did it cause problems between you and your mom? All right, winos, if you enjoy shows like this and would like to see more with me on stage in your city, well, I'm coming. Tickets on sale right now. Link in the description box as well as the bio. Hurry up now while tickets last, okay? <laughs> well, we're back for another episode of SVU. But before we get into that, don't forget, TashaKOnStage.com. Go ahead and get tickets to the next live show. Baltimore, the Baltimore, April 14th is the next date. TashaKOnStage.com. <laughs> Jasmine just threw that out there to me right quick. I had to like think of what I was going to say. All right. But y'all, y'all go see Tasha K live. Y'all need to see the jokes. It's jokes in you. You know what I'm saying? We having a good time. We, we got skits. You know what I'm saying? We we got visual aids. We talking to y'all about what's going on on the blogs, girl. We, we, we giving you a little tea here and there. It's a good time. It's a good time. Make sure y'all get y'all tickets. Tasha K on stage.com. And the Legion interview will be premiering on TashaKLive.com at 8 p.m., don't forget, y'all, this is the whole Risa Tisa ordeal. Now there's a Legion family, and apparently there's some allegations that, you know, messing with the daughter, messing with the first wife daughter. That might, you know, explain some of the things y'all see in, in, you know, the commercial that plays. Okay, but yeah, it's going to be a mess. Make sure y'all come through tonight, 8 p.m., watch the interview, child. We're going to have to talk about it because, oh, Lord, just... It's giving a lot of project type, you know, issues, like just real, you know, ugh, dark. Ugh. Okay, but we're gonna watch. It's messy. All right, let's move on. Listen, I wish I could, I would listen. If I was in my own studio right now, I'd be pressing the white men laughing and screaming and applauding okay because i love to hear white men applauding for me so i would have pressed that right now because i told y'all if you are my followers if you are bon bon okay if you a wino that's been watching me for a while you know i didn't told y'all that diddy's whole situation was coming i told y'all and i told y'all because I watched the Hugh Hefner Playboy Mansion documentary, and as soon as I watched it, it was just like I was, that's so raving, bitch. I had a moment, and it all came to me, okay? And what came to me was that what happens in Hollywood a lot of the times, okay? You got people like Diddy. You got people like Hugh Hefner. You know, there are some other people that are known for their house parties, right? In these house parties, things always happen where the police are called. I don't know if y'all know, but Diddy's Miami home has been the site for a lot of 
Chris Brown, Trey Songs have all had legal issues tied to parties that have happened at Diddy's home. But then all of a sudden, these things just kind of go away. And if anybody watched what happened with Hugh Hefner, Hugh Hefner will record everybody. Have a big party. Have y'all, you know, doing whatever Tiffany Haddish main thing was. You know what I'm saying? Having a good time, you know, having sex with people, children, animals, whatever the fuck they was doing. They record you. Story come out. Hey, we got this video with you, so you may want to be quiet about that. That's how that would happen a lot of time. People would get get away with a lot of stuff that happened at these parties because the people that are over these parties get the right evidence on the right people so everybody can stay quiet, which is why I love Tasha so much, and I never understand why everybody's so mad when she putting these niggas on blast because ultimately you should be glad that these people are being put on blast. What's going to happen? Your kid going to watch these people, you know, shaking and shitting the videos and all of that. They going to grow up looking up to them. They going to go to Hollywood one day. Oh, oh, my God, they have an opportunity to go to a party oh my god and then you wake up and your asshole hurt and you don't know why you know what i'm saying so y'all y'all should be happy when anybody is being put on blast for nefarious behavior such as the shit that's going down not a federally hood then came nope, just the in. uh just these uh the guys on the ground down there the, the heavily armed uh, mm -hmm. officers that made their way inside they actually are kind of just milling about or holding the perimeter as it would be the non-essential you can see them making their way back over to these armored vehicles probably doing a little debrief about so what upset. they saw in, in any type of these situations it really is you know you've got these armored officers that go in first but I would venture to say the investigators or the people that are know what they're looking for probably still out there on the streets and they're waiting for that all clear to make sure that there is absolutely nobody on this property and again, this is just a, a precaution. They don't want to have any kind of issues. Yeah, maybe somebody's yeah, hiding home. still. Maybe just scared. And it you know, doesn't have to So, be. earlier today, Homeland Security Investigations New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from Homeland Security Los Angeles and Miami and the local law enforcement partners in Los Angeles, okay? So New York, Miami, and Los Angeles all have homes owned by Sean or his business or one of his kids because he didn't put one of these houses in his daughter's name, and you got his kids being pulled out of the house and handcuffed. Y'all, this shit is embarrassing. This is so embarrassing. Can you imagine the white people standing outside in their robes like, mm. We were wondering when it was going to happen. Mm. Honey, you, you've never been to Sean's parties, have you? You've never been? Are you sure? Because I'm telling y'all, the federal hood is looking for video. The federal hood is looking for evidence. They in there because there is something to be found in there. What did I just tell y'all about Hugh Hefner's house and the cameras and recording everybody? It does feel like they going in his house because they know there is something to be found and they know exactly what they're looking for. And... The allegations are sex trafficking, which means Diddy might be getting indicted on a RICO. Yes. Let me explain how this happens. So in hip hop, it has been somewhat of a regular occurrence for them to get girls, whether these girls want to be video girls, whether they want to be stars, whoever these girls may be, they're beautiful women. They are picked by the top notch creme de la creme of entertainment and then they are brought to parties. And then other celebrities see these girls. And just like Corinne Steffens, AKA Elizabeth Overson said in her first book, they will sell you out to other men. I don't know if y'all remember what happened with Murder Inc and Irv Gotti. That was a Rico case as well. Do you know what they were doing? They were also selling coochie over the over the state lines okay if you are selling people selling coochie over state lines that can result in a rico charge if they can connect it to a, a whole syndicate meaning that it's being done in an organized manner and when i read corinne stephan's book again as an adult what it sounded like to me is irv Gotti used to sell her out to other people and guess who was one of the people she was sold out to at one point Sean. Oh, yes. Sean. 
Sean wanted Corinne Steffens to come over to his house, and he had to call Irv Gotti in order for her to come. Sounds like this is something they do in Hollywood. Y'all get these girls, and then y'all start selling them amongst one another. And then everybody's wondering why Future and Drake are over there supposedly fighting over a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Girl. This is scary, y'all. When they pulled the kids out the house, to me, this very much lets me know that the kids are also thought of to be involved. Y'all have seen how the sons have been at these parties. The sons have been around these women. Um, and now you're putting houses in your daughter's name. Like, he is definitely coming I feel like showing himself to be the psycho that I thought he was. When he did the BET Awards, y'all, and he was up there, and Young Miami is in the crowd with her dumbass sign. Oh, yeah, did y'all see her talking about she think it's going to be a great summer? Somebody told her, ma'am, please go to check the news because your baby daddy's houses are being raped. I mean, not your baby daddy, your old ass nigga that you're messing with. Uh, <laughs> the houses are being raided, girl. He might as well be a baby daddy, girl, the way she be over there sticking beside him, Okay. But ever since the Cassie situation, ever since he paid Cassie off, y'all know all of the allegations have been coming out about Diddy and him, you know, being a grape juicer, for lack of a better term, on YouTube, okay? In November, Cassie, Cassie legally, known as Cassandra Ventura, sued Diddy and, you know, accused her of doing exactly what? Doing exactly what? Having sex with a whole bunch of prostitutes that he would call on? There's a, a Rolodex of people, and he would tell her to just pick somebody with the biggest cock and tell them to come on through. Y'all, the funniest thing about this is the fact that, you know, we've, all, we've always joked about the fact that people think that Diddy is a switch. He likes both. But the craziest thing is to think that he will get a girlfriend that he finds extremely beautiful so he can demean her, degrade her, and basically embody her. So he makes her have sex with the men that he would like to have sex with. But he knows he can't really have sex with those men like that because he's Diddy, he's a man. That's some gay shit. He ain't trying to do that, right? So no, instead, I'm going to have my girlfriend have sex with these men and then I'm going to watch and I'm going to tell them what to do. And that way I can feel like it's me doing it. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff going on here. And y'all know this even goes back to the whole situation with uh, Pac, right? So when they arrested old boy for shooting Pac, it's been, it's been kind of going downhill since then. Y'all know they think Diddy has something to do with that. And this is, the I'm going to tell y'all, the time I knew that Diddy had something to do with all of that shit, was when that movie came out. When Biggie's movie came out and Diddy tried to play himself like he was this innocent victim, meanwhile he's in the back of all of the records bucking the shit up, okay? Can't stop, won't stop. What you niggas wanna do? Like he in the background of all of the songs going off about how he down for all this street shit and everybody was thinking because he was wearing shiny shoots and sh you know, shiny suits and dancing and doing all of this shit. You know, y'all thought that he, <laughs> y'all thought he wasn't really as as gutter as he is. But from what I've heard, y'all, Diddy goes around with a group of big ass security dudes that do all his dirt for him. A whole bunch of do dirt niggas. The situation with Cassie. If anybody ever read the court document, she talked about how the security guys would basically just surround them, and he would be able to do whatever he wanted to do to her, and nobody would be able to come in and save her or get to her because he has all of his security surrounding them and let's not even talk about the situation where he you know shot up the club and shine got blamed for it y'all know that was when him and j-lo broke up you know what i'm saying because j-lo was like oh no i thought he wasn't this niggerish i gotta get out of here you know what i'm saying go back to the white men ben affleck so yeah y'all this is so messy and it is going down right now i don't know if they're still raiding his house but we did see video of justin and um what's the other combs boy um is justin and uh what's the other one name What's the other one named, child? You know he got so many damn kids. I can't remember. All of them ain't even his, okay? But Justin and the one that looked just like him, King, handcuffed. Handcuffed on a curb in a white neighborhood. Embarrassing, y'all. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being this rich, being this, this nigga's kids, thinking that y'all are safe, and they busting in the house, waving the 4 4 like it's a Biggie song? Like, <laughs> it's crazy. I wonder what they're going to find. I wonder what is going to take place after this, but it's definitely seeming like 
Diddy's going down. Diddy's going down. Diddy's going down, down, down. Um, Combs said in his own statement that the decision was agreed upon with the Cassie situation, that he would pay her off. And I don't know why he thought that paying her off would not look as bad as it did. Also, y'all know that they say one of them other girls, allegedly, I don't know if this is true or not, but they say one of them other girls that sued him, allegedly, is Tierra Marie. And when I think back on Tierra Marie's whole, you know, career, it definitely feels like some things have happened to her because she another one that let that alcohol completely, you know, take over. And you wonder why. It's because people are always being put in these types of situations where it's a casting couch, you know, situation. Oh, you want to make it? You got to give up coochie. And then you, you don't just give up coochie to me. You give up coochie to who I want you to give up coochie to. So I wonder what's going on with Young Miami because, you know, everybody in Miami say that Young Miami comes from the girls, come from the family that's about this shit. They about all this hood shit. They about selling coochie and doing whatever they got to do so they down for whatever. And let's not forget, she let us know she was down for whatever when she was saying that she could have the other girl eat her out if Diddy told the girl to. I was like, so you're just admitting what Cassie told us and you ain't even know. You tweeting this shit. She tweeted that, girl, look, you, you'll eat me out if Diddy tell you to. And it's like Cassie said, Diddy has me has me eating out people that I don't want to eat out. Girl, you telling on your man. I wonder if he was upset about that. <sighs> the things the girls get in into when they trying to get them a rich old nigga, girl. Y'all think it's safe with these rich old men? And then, boom, somebody's kicking in the door and taking your Chanel on a Rico chart. Well, y'all, that's really all I got for y'all on this situation. Jasmine, were there any more updates on this situation while I was talking? Girl, y'all, what y'all think gonna happen? Comment down below and let us think. Do y'all really think that Diddy's gonna go to jail? Do y'all think he's gonna get off? Or do y'all think he's gonna go on a jail tour with R. Kelly? Um, I feel like that is a brilliant idea. <laughs> Just go from jail to jail as, as prisoners and perform for all of the other prisoners. You know, uplift the people where you are. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that would probably be the best thing that anybody could do. But I think <laughs> in this situation, but I think I think Diddy might be going down, y'all. And honestly, I've always wondered if there was any connection to the Biggie situation. Y'all know everybody like to act like that's not what happened. But... They used to say that people was worth more dead than alive back in the day. And we all know how Diddy was able to come out on top after Biggie died. You know, every step I take, mm, every move I make. He was able to make songs. But y'all saw how everybody kind of moved away from him after that. Faith, Kim, Mary. I mean, none of the, the bands have ever worked out, child. That's another thing I want them to dig into. What the fuck was going on on the band? Like, you got to know, if they were showing us Diddy making people walk to different boroughs for cheesecake and Cambodian breast milk, you got to know. It's a joke, y'all. Don't worry about it. He wasn't really having them look for Cambodian breast milk. Don't worry about it. It's a Dave Chappelle reference. You may not be old enough to know the reference, but God damn it. The comedians have been making fun of Diddy this entire time. All of the comedians know what Diddy is on. Everybody's scared of Diddy. 50 is probably posting right now, making fun of Diddy, laughing at him. Because y'all know 50 loves to remind y'all that Diddy been trying to get his booty for a while now. And it's like, nigga, you couldn't get my ass, and now you're going to be protecting your ass in prison unless they care about, you know, take that, take that, take that. And they want you to, you know, perform one of the songs and shit. Because, you know, that's what, that's what R. Kelly be doing in jail he be singing and performing for people so you know we'll see we'll see we'll be here and we'll be reporting on everything that's going down with diddy okay mm -hmm. federal rally hood then raided the house all right y'all thank y'all for joining us tonight we hope y'all be back for another show y'all know where to follow me y'all don't know where to follow me at yet i'm bondy blue bitch. you ain't know I'm sorry. I thought y'all knew who I was. I, at this point, y'all should know who I am. Bondi Blue, baby. Bondi Blue on YouTube. I'm also on Tasha K Live. I'm sorry. Yeah, TashaKLive.com. I'm also on the website. Y'all can follow me on Instagram at Bondi Blue because I might be on Instagram tonight drunk talking about this show and talking about everything that went down. I want to hear from y'all. Follow me on Instagram. And please don't forget TashaKOnStage.com because I might be on one of those shows. <laughs> you just never know. 
You never know. Y'all this whining. God to me. Blame Tasha. They always giving me alcohol when I come here. And I be trying to be sober. But we'll see y'all in the next show. <laughs>